Hello folks. So um, this is a recorded session. Uh, we're going to be talking today with Sid Cooper, frontman of the band LOA State, who I'm a big fan of. <clears throat> Bit of a trigger warning, there may be some language. Uh, so uh, if there are young impressionable ears nearby, maybe take precautions. So, um, yeah, Sid is going to talk about the crisis of meaning. Uh, we, we're probably all aware that there's a crisis of mental health at the moment. Sid's also going to talk about the crisis of meaning and his own mental health experiences and how uh, he is trying to get some messages across through his music and uh, how the coronavirus pandemic is affecting him personally and collectively at what, uh, what shifts in consciousness and attitude uh, may be being perceived throughout this period. So before we welcome Sid, uh, I would like to play my favourite LOA State song so far, which is called Love As You Want It. And I now need to press some buttons to make that happen. So let's try this, here we go. Everyone within the room again It's me that signal fixed on lip syncing Tricks herself in and out to shop mingling Now I'm just stood there taking it in I so this is what I got Love as you want it state. So hopefully Sid will be along very shortly. I'll pause the recording for a moment and then magically 
he should appear. The city provides so much of what we want to so many people. Although this city offers very little of what we need. Love, peace, anarchy. One day, in an LOA state. There you go, got the notification. <laughs> it is here. Welcome, Sid. Thanks for having me, Paul. I really appreciate this, mate. So it's going to be good. Likewise, yeah. Thank you very much for coming on. And uh, it was triggered really by a video that you posted on the LOA State site. Was it yesterday or the day before, a couple of days ago? I don't, I don't know. I keep saying, I don't, I don't know what, I'm losing track of time here. Um, and you don't know what day of the week it is, do you? And it's, it's, it's a strange time to be alive at the minute. Obviously, it's, 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 it's an awful situation, but I think uh, me and a lot of people just try to take as much positive. Sorry about that. There's a tractor right next to me. <laughs> um, just take as much positivity as you can take, as I suppose, um, going forward. I'll just move out of the way one second. Okay. Yeah, I totally agree, Sid. It's, uh, it is a very tricky, challenging situation, and I, I have no, day, no clue what day it is. But it is also an opportunity for. Uh, for change and for awakening, changes in consciousness, changes in personal, how we approach the world. Uh, and that's kind of some of the, the drift of what you were saying in, in your very personal and revealing video that you posted the other day. Um, so you were talking about the crisis of meaning and also talking about your own mental health journey and how we can use this situation to um, change, reevaluate how we are. So, do you want to talk a little bit about, um, kind of introduce yourself first of all, what, what you do and what's got you to where you are today, Sid? Yeah, of course. Um, so, my name's Sid, Sid Cooper. Um, I'm, I consider myself a musician. I'm a musician that's kind of always been a musician, but by standard society where it's like, if it's measured on fame, then I've kind of been an unsuccessful one. But in my own head now, coming to evaluate who I am as a person and stuff, I don't think I've been unsuccessful. I think I've, I've done so much. I've failed so many times. I think failure is a big sign of success because it means you're putting yourself out there. Um, and that's really important to me. Um, I've, over the past two years, after the last, the last band I was in, that kind of ended, I, I hit a bit of a... A bad, bad time, really. Well, I didn't really tell anyone, uh, but I really struggled with that. And like I said, I mentioned in that video, I kind of the, the world opened up in front of me and I was like hit by this massive, just abyss. It was like I was stood on the edge of something where I could have easily fell in. But I decided that I wasn't going to do that. I was going to decide that with the strength that I'd been given through all these failures and that I was going to turn it into something positive. And I, I wanted to educate myself because I realised I'd left school and I, it was a bad experience for learning me at school. There was, there was one year when I got to be creative, but as a creative person in school, you, you kind of taught to um, stay within the box. Whereas I like to think outside the box um, because I think that's where you find magic. Um, so yeah, the past two years has just been a, a massive learning curve and I'm just trying to build myself as a person. Um, I just find a bit of respect for myself that I think I deserve, really, because we're all in this together and it's a struggle. Life is a struggle. So, yeah, I just, I've just i turned it around now and rather than playing the victim card and stuff, I'm, I'm wanting to turn that into just helping others, really. So that's kind of where I'm at at the minute. Great. So it's a great turnaround. And, yeah, it's interesting you use the word failure. Um, yeah. That's a kind of... It's a very um, spiky word, isn't it? And, and it's very, it is a spiky word. It's, um, it's something we, we can label ourselves with or it's something that society can label us with. And as a musician, it's a really difficult business to, to make a living out of, as, as I'm sure you know. Um, so, 
yeah, by commercial terms, you might be deemed by others or by yourself to be a failure, but it's, it's an act of creativity and it's an act of personal growth. And it's, it's something that gives a lot of pleasure to a lot of people, you know, and I've been to several of your gigs in your previous bands and also your current band. And from all of the people that are there, none of them would deem you a failure. So. It's nice. It's nice to hear. It's nice to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I think that's, that's something about anyone in whatever walk of life they're in, they, they can find themselves at the edge of an abyss and, and label themselves as a failure because they haven't reached some expectations from their parents or from society or, or their own pressure that they put on themselves. So how, how do you see that kind of ties in with the crisis of meaning that you were talking about? In well, of the, like this, the, there's a mental health crisis and it's obvious because um, everyone's talking about it. I don't think people know how to deal, deal with it really. I, 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 do, I agree that people should open up and talk, but I think it's, it's difficult if you don't know how. Like, and, I, and that's where, for me, the problem is with that. It's like, everyone's like, obviously the, the suicide rate's gone up completely, especially with, with, with males. Also with females as well. Let's not forget females because they're, they're struggling just as much as we are. And I, was, I just wanted to find a solution. I wanted to know why because my whole life I've kind of got meaning from not doing what, I'm, what is set out for me. You know what I mean? Like, I understand that you, you do have to get a job and you have, to, you have to work to earn money. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But I don't think that should just be it for you. If, you, if you're going to do that, then... If there's something that you want to do in life, and I think everyone does have kind of something, and even if you can't, it can be the smallest thing. It doesn't have to be being a musician. It doesn't have to be that. It might just be, like I said, just learning how to maybe write or something like that, something as simple as that. It's not simple. <laughs> That's not simple at all. But I, and I thought, I was just thinking, what, what's made, what's given me positivity in life? And it was always been finding meaning in things and, and putting myself out there and kind of what I got from that. Um, it was never about the money I got. It was never about anything, that any quick pleasure or anything like that. It was deeper than that. So I kind of wanted to understand that. Um, and Reese, I've watched loads of YouTube videos, watched, read loads of books, started reading a lot, and I'm finding so much meaning in just reading. Like, and it's, I think it's so important, but I don't think it's given the importance that it's, it deserves. Um, and I've just, I've just kept coming across this meaning thing. And I was just like, not become obsessed with it. I've just been, been wanting to learn more about it and how I can get that across in what I'm doing as a musician. And it's just, it's been, it's really helped. And I think from that video I posted the other day, it's resonated with a lot of people as well. And I think they're feeling the same. And I think they never told that they can be they never told they can do the things they want. Never, I don't think. Um, and I just want to get that across. I want to start giving people confidence because I don't think you can give that to yourself. And I think that comes from other people. And I want to push people just to, just to, just to try. Just to try. And it's scary. really scary. It'll be the hardest thing you'll ever do. But um, if I can maybe show that I'm giving people back in to do it, then that'll make me happy. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a really empowering message you're putting out there Sid so totally on board with it and you know thinking that as you're talking there I was thinking about my daughter she's 15 and yep. um, so last year she had to choose her options for what she's studying for her <laughs> right yeah uh, some of her friends who got perhaps more traditional parents than myself have said well you've got to do science you've got to do this you've got to get a good job and you've got to get this and this and this and I've just said to my daughter just do what you love do what you're passionate there you go. about. So she's doing dance, she's doing photography, she's doing history, and that's not going to lead her into, you know, some high-paying job perhaps. But it's what she loves. And no man, uh, that's that's it for me. That is it. Like I'm obviously I'm getting like tingles when you're saying that and stuff. Um, that's that's exactly the message we're trying to get across. That is it. Do what you love. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Yeah. And I think this situation now is kind of like you said. Put, put that into perspective now where you've had to kind of retract a little bit and you're taken away from the, the craziness and of, of real, real life is it's not real, real life is it? It's just structured, structured life around you 
it's kind of having to being able to sit back. I know the times are so worrying, but being able to sit back and kind of evaluate your life. I think you're seeing people just starting to do that and starting to do things that they like and talk about things that they like. And it's inspiring. It's inspiring for me anyway. And it's making, that's why I've done it because people have been doing it and it's inspired me to do it now. And I just think, well, why not just get, get my message across and hopefully it'll help. Even if it's just one person, then that'd be great. But yeah. Yeah. It's kind of what I'm doing with the Thrive Hive. I just think if, if one exactly. is inspired or one person, um, you know, I talked the other week about my, uh, one of my oldest friends from school lost his niece recently um, okay. because she was, um, she was in isolation because of the crisis, the, the, the pandemic, and she couldn't cope with the isolation. And she didn't talk about it, I presume. She had no... Right, okay. Oh, right, okay. If, if doing what you're doing and doing what I'm doing just saves one person or inspires one person to, to speak out about the mental health issues or to follow... Uh, what they're passionate about, then it's job done, isn't it? It is, mate. And yes, yeah, so that's it's horrible. I've had um, a couple of friends who have lost people for, from the the virus. Um, sp spoke to one. One's a, a friend that I haven't spoke to in a long time. Um, but I left her a message, and then I spoke to another friend yesterday who's had a, a friend who just passed recently. And it's just he it, 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 it was just saying he doesn't know how to handle it. He doesn't know what. He doesn't know. This is how do you handle this? Two weeks ago, he was talking to him. Now he's now he's not there, and I just try to be there for him, like and stuff. So yeah, it's crazy. Way out and stuff, maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's if it's helping, but it feels right. So that's that's the main thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So how how are you coping with the pandemic and the lockdown? What's how is it changing your life? Um, at first, I was going a little bit out of my mind. Um, I live with my parents, who are lovely people, but I was kind of I'm 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 old enough to have moved out now. You know, I mean, um, and I was worried because I really, going in due to my from my own problems. Like I've, I've grown apart from my parents a little bit in the fact that, and I, again, I said it in that video, you, you think your parents are superheroes, but then when you grow up, you start to see that they're human just like you. And, and I started judging them for the way they were and stuff, not, not to the place really, just through behavior and for myself, you know. And given having this time now, it's, it's, it's great. It's getting better. And, um, we're talking and we're starting to understand each other and stuff like that. And so that's, that's one positive. Um, I've, I've also been smoking weed for most of my life and I can't get old of any. <laughs> so I've had to stop and all of a sudden I've seen a new side to myself, which I really like. And one I'd like to take forward, you know, I don't want to go back into being that person, that paranoid uh, person who's, it just wasn't well, to, to people in the outside world. I, I, I probably seemed fine and, and nice, but inside I wasn't. I wasn't. I was wasn't dealing with anger and, and resentment and stuff in in, in the right way. Um, and I bottled a lot up. And now just talking has, re has really helped and stuff like that. So that's kind of that's my journey with it. Um, obviously, it's really worrying and stuff. You just try to look after people around you and just be there for for your friends and your family, really. But yeah, how about you, Paul? Yeah, so uh, it's been a bit of a roller coaster for me, Sid, to be honest. So okay. the first week I was fine and a lot of yeah. my friends were feeling a lot of anxiety and I was in this kind of zen-like space of, don't worry, it'll all be cool. Yeah. And then I just had a, a bit of a meltdown, to be honest. And you know what you were saying about having the rug pulled from underneath you and staring yep. at the abyss? Yeah, and, and that was that's where I was. I was incredibly anxious and fearful. Um, had a lot of self doubt, suicidal thoughts, all yep. sorts of stuff. I, mean, I thought my business is is going to tank, and I don't know what's going to happen. And there was various other stuff going on in my life at that time, and it just got too much for me. Really struggled, and then yeah, kind of reached out to friends, got a lot of support, did a lot of self care stuff. Uh, went to see a business coach. Started up the Thrive Hive, and within the space of two days, I was kind of 
riding the crest of a wave again and just feeling like you said purpose you know i just feel like yeah. it's it's ignited something in me and i'm feeling more connected to myself and more connected to my network and friends and people that i don't even know i'm connecting to them yeah and yeah, yeah. I'm doing. And, uh, i'm actually really enjoying many aspects of of this new way of being yeah 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 that's really that's positive it's great it's, it's just good that you can open up like that paul and that's that's it's, it's that's a, it's just helping me just listening to you, you know what i mean it's like it's inspiring again it's, it's just positive and i'm sorry that you had to go through that and stuff but i, I think they're calling that the funk at the minute that uh <laughs> mood or something i heard that phrase the other day phrase word whatever the funk uh but I, yeah uh, very up and down but at the same time uh, just trying to evaluate the downs and then apply that to the, the ups if that makes any sense whatsoever yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, and a lot of the, the reading that you've been doing and the, the TED Talks, YouTube videos, that type of stuff, that yep. um, there's a lot of wisdom out there. And what resonated with me from your video is um, around going to, to the edge of the abyss, that darkness, and mm -hmm. from that comes light. And, and that reminded me of, um, do you know anything about Jungian psychology and alchemy? Um, it's straight from Jung. I'm, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Yeah. Not obsessed, but I've just I, I it really um, resonates for me. Mm. The stuff he talks about and how deep he went into the psyche and stuff like that. And if you think that someone's gone that that deep, then they must have found like nuggets of gold along the way and stuff like that. So um, there's people to these are people to aspire to be like and stuff like that because they they have answers, which is good, and they stop the confusion, which again is also positive. But yeah, mm. sorry if I interrupted you. There. Yeah, no, no, it's all good. So, um, yeah, there's the kind of, there's a four stage process of alchemical transformation, which Jung talks about. You, you can teach me more about him here because like, I think I've only just dipped my toe into the water and, and obviously it's, it's an ocean into, and there's so much in each, in each part that um, I've, I've only just touched it really, but mm. I'm getting so much from it. So I'd love you to tell me about it. That'd yeah. be great. Okay, okay. so it's, um, you know, the old alchemists in, I suppose, in the Middle Ages, um, people kind of characterised them as trying to turn lead into gold, but that was really a, a metaphorical process of human transformation. So what what Jung talked about was kind of um, transferring that into psychology and personal growth. Okay. And uh, he says there's four stages uh, with Latin names, I think. Uh, so the first one is Negredo which is the blackness and that's right. where everything is. it's the funk basically like you yeah um where you've had the rug pulled from underneath you you might be depressed anxious don't know where you are lost your way um and it, it's like the veil has been removed from whatever illusions were were covering up your life and any masks that you might have been wearing Oh and God, we know that's about kind of where we are as a society now with, with this pandemic. It feels like we're, we're in a collective negredo state where everything's kind of been, the veil's been lifted, there's a big abyss there, and it's like, gosh, what do we do next? So then the next stage is called albedo, which is the whitening. So this is where we, we get some kind of purification. And there's, it's starting to access the unconscious stuff so you know like you were talking about with your parents your relationship yep. there and you started to um talk be honest and um perhaps with knocking the drugs on the head as well that's been able to connect you more to your inner self yep. so it's like shining the light on stuff and then after that comes citrinitas which is the yellowing and this is um, where you get new growth, you get hope, you get new ways of being, you get enlightenment. And it's this kind of joyful place of, wow, it doesn't have to be like it was before. It could be like this. It's amazing. So that's the kind of transformational zone. And then the final stage is called Rubedo, which is, I think that's the, the red stage, um, where you've got to just integrate that into your life and make it a new way of being and make it a habit. And that's how you go from darkness to transformation to lightness. And it's not like a one shot, then it's done. It's like a, a spiral process that we go through yeah. in our lives. So we have various 
Negredos and we work our way through it and we embed the changes and then we have another one and another one and another one but hopefully we're growing and going up the spiral all the time. It's like building a puzzle within yourself isn't it really like in a way um, it's kind of like um, I've watched recently Plato's Allegory of the Cave where yeah. he steps out. Yeah I saw that. And it's it, it, that it's like a path to enlightenment and stuff like that. And I think that I think enlightenment has a lot of bad connotations around it and stuff like that because I think people, I think the the 60s kind of ruined that for people with all the flower powers and stuff like that because they kind of got it wrong and that's why it failed because it's it's an inter, it's an internal journey into it. it's not it's not on the outside. It, it will eventually be on the outside because you'll start having a positive effect on other people. Um. But yeah, this internal growth and stuff like that, it's just, it's, it's crazy because the amount you, you try and control life ob is objectively, I think that's the right way of putting it. When you, when you start to just look within in yourself, you, you, answer, you, you answer life's problems just from looking in, in yourself. You have the answers, I found. Um, Whereas when you're looking for the answers outside and you're trying to control whatever's going on in front of you, you end up just going around in circles constantly because you can't control what's outside of you. No one can, but you can control what's inside and that's where you can start. And then it's not, a, obviously it's not about, control is probably a bad word, a bad word really, but um, yeah, I, I, that, that was brilliant. Like that was brilliant because like, you've just put into words where I see my journey in a way. Or, and the process we want to get across. And basically, it's that, that what you said is in every film you'll ever watch. It's, that's every film you'll ever watch. Go through that, that process, that Jungian process and stuff like that. Um, which is why these stories and films now, obviously, we've replaced religion with the Avengers and stuff like that. But like, why, for me, religion and that is still important. The, the stories are still important. And they should not just be thrown to the side, like, because I think people, like the, the guy sat in the cloud, obviously it doesn't exist, but there's, there's the metaphors and the, the, the deep meaning in, in religious stories, whatever religion, I'm not just saying Christianity or anything, because obviously it's looked into Buddhism and stuff like that, because there's so much there, but it's like, um, I think we're missing that kind of, is it metaphysical side? Is that is that right? The kind of the, the, the side, the, the 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 higher good, kind of in a way, something yeah. to aim towards. I think with yeah. that being removed, I think we, we, as people now we're kind of looking at governments for this to be that person, and they're because they're human, they're only letting us down. You know what I mean? And it's it's people we're missing that thing to aspire to, that greater good. Um, and story, these stories and films are kind of, they, they kind of bring that back a little bit. I, I know I've gone off topic here. I think. Can't remember what we were discussing, but um, I'm just trying to get across what I think is important. But yeah, yeah. That's okay. It's okay to meander. That's fine. But yeah, that, I like what you say. The answers inside, and um, that's where we were. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's uh, for me it, that links into following your passion again, and yep. uh, this this crisis of meaning. And I think quite often when we're young children, we know what we love. And yep. I say for my daughter, it's dancing. You know, my son loves football and drumming, and yep. that's what he loves. So I'm going to encourage him to just carry on doing that. And as kids, uh, you know, we're pushed through the school system, like you say. If you're a creative person, it's like a square peg in a round hole. There's very little opportunity for you to pursue that. Yep. Um, and uh, we we kind of get lost. I think we lose Definitely. the things that we're connected to, the things that we're passionate about. And quite often, you know, we talk about midlife crisis and stuff like that. You probably well, uh, again, Paul, with that, you told to stop day, told to stop daydreaming all the time at school. Stop daydreaming. No, no, don't stop daydreaming. Keep daydreaming. You know, because you that's that's your passion. That's what you look. You're thinking about the good things you want to do in life. That's where you are daydreaming, aren't you? So, but sorry, mate, to interrupt again. No, no, no it's all good. <laughs> that's where the creativity is, isn't it? And, um, yeah, I've been a teacher, and I've. I've been frustrated by the kids who are staring out the window and doodling. Yeah. Why are they not listening to me? It's because they're not interested in doing yeah. equations. Yeah. They just want to be creative. So, <laughs> um, 
yeah, you know, I think that <laughs> the middle part of life quite often is about unpicking all of the stuff, all the masks we've put on, all the things that we've learned which actually aren't us and getting back to that core, that thing that we're passionate about, the thing that is going to give our lives meaning. Definitely. Completely agree. Completely agree. Yeah, and getting back to that inner child in a way, isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. That, it, it still speaks a lot of sense. Yes. He or she, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a big part of who we are. So with LOA State, what kind of messages are you trying to get out to people? Because it isn't, it isn't just fluff, is it? It's, uh, <laughs> there's, there's messages there. I know there's a lot of mystique around the band and stuff, but it's, there's serious messages that you're trying to get across. Do you want to explain? Yeah, yeah. The, mis the mystique basically is me hiding. That's, just, that's what that was. And I, I mean, the, we, enjoy it, we enjoyed it. And it, people, people, um, people liked it. People were always asking who, oh, who, I wonder what they look like and stuff like that, which is nice. But that's just the story of my life. Like, what, what do I look like? Like, what's underneath? Um, without sounding self-obsessive or whatever. No, it's, it's not meant to come across like that. But um, yeah, we have a message. We have a little philosophy that I built around something that I saw when I was younger, um, which is this little piece of anarchy thing that um, just presented itself to me for some reason. Um, synchronicity, I think, is that what Jung calls it? Um, when I was on holiday in, in Cornwall, and I've been on, I don't want to say obsessed because I don't want to be obsessed. It's not a, a, an obsession, it's just a curiosity. And I've want, I, I finally kind of felt like I got to grips with it after I figured out Jung's shadow and stuff because it was love, peace, and anarchy. I wanted to know why anarchy, how anarchy fit with love and peace. And so the philosophy we've, we've we kind of put together, I don't, again, this could be fluff, Paul, you know what I mean? I'm still trying to figure it out, but as, as I go along, I'm sure I will. Um, so it's aim towards what you love, which is what we've been talking about. Uh, find peace in action, which is the next step kind of, that's the moving towards um, what you love. And then the face the anarchy yourself, which is because you, 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 it'll be you that's stopping you from doing what you want. Not all, Not always, I understand that, people don't always have the opportunity to do what it is they want but it's it's the responsibility of the people that do to go out there and do that and improve the world in their ways so that, that will hopefully filter down to help these people who don't have the opportunity um so that's kind of that's kind of it does that make does it make sense it does yeah it sounds to me like it is taking personal responsibility for your own happiness it is yeah that's exactly what it is it's about taking responsibility um and it, i think Thinking about it now, it is, it's basically another little model for like Freud's id, superego, ego, for Jung's um, shadow self, and is it what's the the, the third? Is it the high, higher self or what? What? There's the collective unconscious. Is that what you mean? Well, there's that. There's that which. Yeah. Again, sorry, I'm 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 because I've not delved deep enough yet. Still a little little off on the subject. But um, yeah, Freud did super ego and ego. I think it kind of maybe a little model for that as well. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Like you can you can see here, I'm still trying to figure it out, and I think I always will be trying to figure it out. And I think that's what's why I'm so curious about it because it spoke to me. And when I'm living by doing that, by taking responsibility, like you said, um, that's when I'm happiest. So, and that's when I make the people around me happiest. So I think it's important. Absolutely, good man. Okay, so, um, what else did I want to ask you? Um, yeah, I suppose the final thing is, is this curiosity around, you talked about the mystique and you said that was kind of hiding a little bit. I think so. Uh, but it was a bit of fun as well. It was, yeah. Uh, uh, do, you, do you feel going forward that's going to change? Are you going to be more, showing more of yourself? <laughs> We're definitely, I mean, I've just put another video up just before this. Um, on there, definitely going to be showing more of this kind of stuff, more conversational stuff, um, because I think it's important. I think by opening up dialogue, by having, by having these, how would you say this? By opening it up anyway, conversation, you encourage other people to join in. Um, and from putting that video up the other day, all of a sudden, it's like people are waiting to say how they feel but then they, they feel like they can't because they feel like they're going to be shamed or they're going to be 
they're going to um, upset people, but you've, you've got to talk because you, that's how you figure things out. That's how you understand the world. That's how you understand these thoughts that you have in your head and stuff like that. But that's why we started writing in it because the, all these hieroglyphics and that, you're taking thoughts out of your head and putting them on a wall so you can evaluate, kind of. So it's kind of, that's how you do it. You, by putting your words out in conversation, open conversation, which is aimed at finding truth rather than just feeding bullshit. Sorry to swear, Paul, but feeding people with false information and stuff like that. You, you just observe yourself and just ask yourself, are these things saying I'm true? And do I know where I've got these things from? Because you, if you don't, you'll be doing more harm than good. And it's kind of together, just like Socrates did with um, is it Gal, 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 Galcon, Galcon, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm still, he, uh, Plato's Republic, basically. There's a conversation between Socrates and Glaucon, I think he's called, where they're having open, they both disagree with each other, but they find the truth. And that's what it's about, is watching them two disagree and come to some kind of truth, because the truth will always be between two different opinions. And it's just about finding that. Um, again, I'm sorry, mate, I've, I've wondered, I keep wondering, but I've, I've, you can see I've been dying to say all this stuff and just not, so it's kind of not being given the opportunity now. It's kind of, it's, I know, I know it's just a noise like my friends like Denny especially because I'm always going on like this to him he's the only one who gets to hear it and he's just like oh you just shut up for a minute <laughs> and he's right he's right because he, he, he loves context and stuff like that and I tend to I tend to go all over the place um, but yeah wherever I'm going there I just I, I, I want to just say thanks Paul for allowing me this opportunity and stuff like that and I, I, what you're doing and I think is incredible and hopefully it'll inspire a lot more people to do the same thing and stuff like that because I think conversation, open, honest conversation is what is the way to go coming forward when we come out of this this crisis or it is, well, this virus crisis. It is a crisis, still, isn't it? But yeah. It's a crisis and an opportunity, but yeah, thank you. 100%. No, no worries. No worries at all. Thank you. Um, yeah, brilliant. So, um, yeah, I can, I can pick up your passion, Sid. There's obviously yeah. there's so much stuff kind of stewing inside you, and you're, I can feel your excitement about all this knowledge that you're picking up. And yeah, there is so much wisdom out there, and, and you're speaking a lot of wisdom yourself. And thank you, mate. The key messages you're getting across there are talk, talk about mental health, follow your passion, make yourself vulnerable. That gives other people, yes. Yeah. yeah, show your flaws and show your flaws because they're normally the thing that make you unique. So, yeah. yeah, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to show them. People want to see them. That's what, again, going back to films, sorry, I'm, I'm going to go off here. Going back to films, you'd never watch a film with a perfect human being in it. You would never watch it. It's boring. You watch a film because you want to see how that person gets over his, his flaws and how he conquers his needs and stuff like that. So it's important to show, show people that you are flawed because we're human. We're flawed. We're flawed beings and we'll always be like that. But the best bit is, is being able to find connections within our flaws and then making them whatever. <laughs> it's, <laughs> whatever. The, it's, it's the hero's journey. Um, That's the one. Campbell, do you know Joseph Campbell? Yeah, I've, I've read that. I've read that. Yeah. yeah, so you can see that. Yeah. 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 It is. Inspired Star Wars. So that, that'll do for me. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, you are. You are a Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know which side of the force I'm on yet at the minute, so I'm just still, still trying to figure that out. <laughs> we all have that yeah. dark side, the young, young shadow. So, um, before we end, is there anything else that you want to bring, Sid? Um, no, I think we covered it. Just like, just I just wanted to encourage people, and hopefully that's come across. Um, I just, like, again, just, I love this, Paul. I love, I love conversations like this, deep conversations, meaningful conversations. Um, and just, yeah, if anyone wants a, a chat or anything or got anything to say, then uh, you can speak to us, can't they? Yeah. We'll, we'll, always, we'll always listen. Absolutely. So, yeah. so if people do want to follow yourself or LOA State, where can they find out more? Uh, so we're, ba we're, we're kind of based more on Instagram at the minute because that allows us to be kind of as creative as we can be. But we've moved, we're moving on to YouTube a bit more. We're on Facebook. It's, it's L-O-A and then state to all one word. Um, and there'll be this, the more, I don't know, this is just kind of opened it up this week. Um, so there'll be, there's going to be more, we, lo we like creating, we like putting out content. There's more conversational stuff. And, and then come next month, we'll be releasing some, of our 
what we consider to be our big singles. So I'm looking forward to doing that and getting that going. Excellent. Look forward to yeah. it. So I think we'll we'll close with uh, why me why, which I think <laughs> it's connected to kind of personal responsibility. Do you want to say a little bit about what the the song's about? Yeah, I, wa I was watching back the video that I said the other, that I put on the other day on Instagram TV because I, I like to look at myself and see what I'm saying if it's right and stuff and kind of and kind of tear myself apart a little bit and to put myself back together. And um, that song came on straight after, and then it was kind of like. I always thought I was singing that song to a friend, but I can see now that I'm actually singing it to myself. Um, so yeah, it's about, it's about me taking responsibility for my life and perfect song for what we're talking about. So thanks, Paul. Coming out of that victim stage into personal responsibility. Yeah, man, 100%. It'll, it'll set you free, it'll set you free. Excellent. Well, Sid, thank you very much for your time and your honesty and your insight. It's been really interesting and I'm really inspired by what you're doing. So, keep Same on. to you, Paul. Thank, thank you. you very much, man. You take care, Sid. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. So there we go. That was Sid Cooper from LOA State. Uh, this is a great American tune. With a lot of my native New York wisdom oh. behind him. Uh, so hopefully you took some uh, useful messages from that. Uh, do follow LOA State on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, wherever you want to. And uh, I shall see you soon. Bye.